The Mark Daisy Show is brought to you over Broadband Box Office Network, produced at VK Media Studios, Pat Maruki, producer and director. We are archived on Facebook and iTunes and live every third Wednesday of the month. We're big. We're big. We are big. We are better. We are bigger and better than ever. How do we do it? How do we do it? Volume, volume. Turn up the volume. <laughs> you made it. Welcome to podcast number five. A series of five podcasts so far <laughs> in which you have tuned into number five. Thank you for coming. Uh, if we were further along, it would be a higher number. It's the mathematical thing. You know, like the way some people end their sentences. <laughs> anyway, first off, first off, a uh, couple of announcements. Uh, we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll a couple of announcements. First off, re- research has a, a sh- <laughs> research research. That's like searching again because you never know. Sometimes you lose something like a shoe, and then you you know you got like two different pairs of shoes, which I have been known to do, to wear separately, and then you have a pair somewhere in your closet exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Like this. You got, like, one of these, but but you also have, like, one of these. But you you can't, and there's there's no way of, like, you know, a public service announcement. Research has shown that aluminum chlorhydrate can affect your memory. And I I think that's important to know. Also, first off, a public service announcement. Research has shown uh, that aluminum chlorhydrate in your antiperspirant can affect your memory. I don't know. Also, public service announcement. I wanted to mention something about aluminum chlorhydrate. Well, I guess it's not important. Anyway. Oh, we have a sponsor. Step right up, step right up. Anything on the bottom shelf or on the top shelf, speaking of top shelf, chef, (laughs) speaking of top chef, which has more viewers than us right now. Top shelf, I'm talking um, KB Design. They'll do your landscaping and they'll do it right the first time. They won't have to come in and dig it up and reseed it and and, and put the things back in the fertilizer and then walk around and, and call you back in two weeks. They'll do it right. KB Design, our new sponsor. I'm so happy about that. Um... So, you know, when you start in show business, <laughs> show business, you know, it's so hard to gain acceptance and validation from your audience or for anyone, uh, from anyone for that matter. So, a funny thing happened. Uh, I was driving uh, down here today uh, and I, you know, I, I guess I was, I was speeding. I, don't, I didn't think I was speeding and cop pulls me over. He says, uh, you're going 60 in a 40 mile an hour zone. So I said, uh, that's a joke. He said, oh, you're a real comedian. So finally, some validation. And I mean, I'll take anything. So there you go. I'm a real comedian. I'm so happy. <laughs> so I and I guess the cops are watching everywhere you go these days. I mean, there's cameras on every intersection. Uh, there's like 25 cameras and, uh, you know, 17,000 officers in a bunker somewhere that are monitoring a wall of TV sets that, you know, at any given moment they're watching for speeders to go through. So, uh, my hometown, there's a couple of intersections. <laughs> Can you believe it? And a store, even. I don't, like, civilization is taking over. Um, so uh, so I went through a green light at what I thought was the, the proper speed. And uh, so uh, this, like, flash goes off. Bing, bing. And I'm going, wow, I guess I was going too fast, and they took my picture. So I got to check this out because I'm kind of nervous about all these cameras. I want to get it right. Okay, I don't want to leave like a video trail somewhere that somebody can go, oh, he's a, he's a speeder. We happen to have the video right here. No, 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 no. I'm going to do it right. So I turned around. I came back to the intersection. This time I went slower. Bam! <laughs> Another flash goes off. I'm like, oh, man, I guess I'm just going, I'm going too fast. I'm going too fast, I guess. I turn around again. I go really, really slow. Bam! The camera takes another picture. 
On Friday, I get back from work. There's three tickets in, in my mailbox for not wearing my seatbelt. <laughs> It's like a, they're, they're private eyes. They're watching you, watching you, watching you, watching you, watching you. Are you watching this live? Yeah. That's yeah, not a bad effort uh, when you think of it. Really, I could be eating tuna uh, on rye and uh, probably be doing a better show because you wouldn't understand half of what I was saying which would probably make more sense. I was walking my dog the other day, and I passed a neighbor's front lawn. And there in the front lawn is this beautiful piece of nature, this, this beautiful wild fairy fawn, this young deer fawn over by the trees. I thought, wow, that's really beautiful. That's a really nice thing to see. You know, it's a nice surprise to get them. So the next day, I'm walking by, And I noticed the fawn again. Well, it turns out my new neighbor, it's a statue. It's a statue of some deer. But that's nice. He's put like a fawn up in in his front yard to, you know, give the illusion of of wildness and beauty and and rarity, you know, in nature. And I kind of respect him from that, for that, (laughs) to that. In, on, into, over, four, of, four, up, and down. All the prepositions thereof, which you could insert to make that sentence make any sense. Anyway, he's got the fawn there, and it's a beautiful thing. The next day, I go by, and there's several arrows into the thing. It's a target. (laughs) It's a target. My neighbor's a hunter, and he's got NRA bumper stickers and stuff. I... Oh, I'm supposed to have little segue things in between uh, the uh, segments today. Last time, as you remember, uh, Don McClay, my good friend, said that we should have musical segments in between the, uh, uh, the, the, <laughs> the segments that are non-musical. However, no one is monitoring the, the musical or non-musical segment interloper at this particular time. Later on in the show, maybe we will. Don Anyway, um, the world has gone nuts. The world has gone <laughs> nuts, hasn't it? It's just, it's nuts. I mean, people believe a thing, and they are willing to kill to make their point. I mean, they're, they're not even willing to kill people that they know. They're, they're willing to kill people they don't even know in order to prove that their beliefs are the beliefs. There are more deaths over religion than for, like, any other reason than I, that I can think of. In the 60s, John Kennedy, he almost didn't get elected because there were people who actually thought he was going to make non-Catholics go to Mass on Sunday as, like, a presidential decree. I swear, I was there. I saw it. Incredible as it may seem. Really. Henry VIII started a new religion and killed his wives over the whole darn thing. Uh, Jim Jones in Guyana. Remember, step up, drink the Kool-Aid. You know, if you believe. Uh, and people still are drinking the Kool-Aid. The Crusades, for Christ's sake. And Christ had nothing to do with it, by the way. Now, apparently, there are those who want to put the John Scopes trial, the monkey trial, back, uh, back on the front page again. Like for teaching evolution. I, I can't believe it. Apparently, honest to goodness, law makers, and, and when I say law, these are the things that happen in, uh, in our society that we have to follow. So, and, and we always do uh, because they're mandatory. So there are, there are absolutely, there, there are law makers who are making it mandatory for teaching creationism in Texas schools. I can see it now. <laughs> Chapter one. Hey, it could have happened. <laughs> Unit one. When everything began 5,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah, okay, and zombies might come and eat my brains tonight, too, while I sleep. Because that's real, right? Yeah. Well, I, I think the zombies are coming from Texas. So run, run, run as fast as you can. <laughs> Because they look like uh, Mexicans uh, that are trying to steal our jobs. Run! Just run as fast as you can, Rayfield. Just run. You'll get away. Uh, So, 
Come on down to Texas and start a business. We won't tax you or regulate you. Don't mess with Texas. And we'll, we'll pay your first semester of Bible school. <laughs> old-timey ways. Wow, that was short and sweet. Can we have some more old-timey ways, Ellen? Come on, hit it again, baby. Suddenly, Ellen is taking over the whole show. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. That was fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Ellen McClay came down. Oh, we're supposed to do some tunes today with the lighting and things. The piano got turned around. It's a long story. Ellen will be back on the show next week or next time that we do the podcast, and uh, she'll be playing for, for real. But right now, we got an old timey kind of Texas song right here, baby. Old time. <laughs> I mean, can Texas song right here. Still learn to play the piano. into the bar. He sat down on the stool. I said, howdy, partner, what can I get you? He said, the truth, I need a fountain of youth. You got a soothing brew of youth there, I'll bet you. And I said, oh, wait a minute, Chester, you're in the right place. I can mix it up in a minute. He said, I want to go home, but I'll be home alone. So mix it up, don't tell me what's in it. He said, my loving went wrong, better give me something strong. I said, I got you something right here. It's one part giving, another part take. And one part holding on, for holding on sake. One part's whisper, another part's shout. One part never enough. What love is about It's a two-part question One part trust One part holding on Holding on rust One part together Another alone But the most important part is Home is where the heart is important part is home is where the heart is home is where the heart is she walked into the bar she sat down on the stool i said howdy honey what can i get you she said, to tell the truth, I need a share of sooth. You got a soothing brew of truth there, I'll bet you. I said, hey, wait a minute, Hester, you're in the right place. I can mix it up right away. She said, my baby don't phone. At times he isn't home, so pour me one slide it my way. She said, my loving went wrong, better give me something strong. I said, I got you something right here. It's one part game. Another part take, one part holding on, holding on sick, one part's question, one part trust, one part knowing, golden band don't rust, one part together, another and all, the most important part. Home is where the heart is. Home is where the 
Home is where the heart is. Wrote that one a long time ago. I'm so happy that I remembered all the words. <laughs> that's for sure. Well, that's for all the people down in Texas. Okay. KB Design. Recommended and, and certified uh, by leading landscapers everywhere. It's our new sponsor. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Okay, there are absolutely, positively, without a doubt, too many zombies. <laughs> there are too many zombies. There are too many zombies. Can we stop with the zombies? If you're walking around eating brains, with all due respect to Jeffrey Dahmer, okay, uh, I, really, then you're not alive. You could be alive. You have to be alive to be walking around. To, if you're not dead, because if you're dead, then you've died, okay? And, and you can't do what alive people do, like eat brains and walk, kind of. You must be alive for that. So, if you're dead, then you are dead. You've died, and you don't have the things that you have when you're alive, because by definition, you're dead. You can't be both. The only good zombie is a dead zombie. <laughs> okay? So, enough with the zombies. I see them everywhere. I look on TV, on in movies. There's zombies zo and cop shows. So, zombies, zomb cop shows and zombies. That's what I said. Let's get a cop show that's a zombie show. I got it. The show could be called Zombie Cops, <laughs> and I, it'll be Zombie Cops. They're all part of a special Zombie Victims Unit, NYC, Inner Division, Secret Ops, Security Details, gals and guys in black uniforms and shiny boots dropping out of helicopters <laughs> on ropes and, and things. <laughs> Episode 13, Primordial Ooze, The Rise of the Dirt Mummies. Ah, yeah, mummies. Less zombies, more mummies. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what what mummies do when, when they catch you. I mean, I I know that it takes longer for them to catch you because they're slower than zombies. But technically, they're they're also dead. I you know, unless of course you you believe in science. <laughs> Oh, what a silly thing to do or to want to do. And if you don't believe in science, just pretend. Or if you do believe in science, just pretend that you're a congressman from South Carolina, Texas, or Tennessee. In which case, it doesn't really matter, does it, if you do or if you don't. Then, of course, zombies will come in the night and eat your brains. And mummies, if they catch you, will do whatever zombies do when they catch you. I don't know. Hurt you with their gauze or whatever they do. You can't prove that they don't exist. And that's why soon <laughs> we'll be helping our kids uh, with their homework in their creationism class. <laughs> I'm just saying. To some, all that is, is. To others, some that is not, shall be. That's, that's all I'm saying. Oh, it's time for another song. I didn't even know. I gotta get some writers for this show so I know where I am. <laughs> it's the truth. Should have learned to play the accordion. It's all tuned for you. But it's kind of humpy. No, no, not into those humpy instruments. Anyway, this song is called Truth Hurts. By the way, I'm writing all these damn songs for this show. I hope somebody appreciates them. <laughs> Truth hurts, and it's hard to find. Truth hurts, 
the truth? It's the truth. Hard to find. The world has gone mad. It's gone mad, I tell you. <sighs> There's a lot of very mad people out there who think that they found the truth, and because they have, they just want everybody to believe that they got it. They got, they got that truth. There seem to be a lot of people waiting for to, just to end life to make their point that everyone else ought to believe in it. I mean, Syria, Iran, Egypt, these are great civilizations. And like, it, it, no small feat, no small feat. And speaking of feet, they all wore sandals at the time of their, their great civilizations. So you ever get one of those little tiny, teeny little pieces of pebble in your sandal when, when you're walking around in the summertime? It's maddening. <laughs> you can't get anything done. You got to get that pebble out. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's agony. I, I don't know how they built the pyramids. I mean, aside from a massive continuing influxing of human slave labor over hundreds of years, I mean, I get, you know, well, I tell you, they used to be tough and maybe they're just losing their toughness. That's right. And you know why? The Egyptians, they slept on stone. The Egyptians, that's what I'm talking about. Ramses the Great, Cleopatra, Nefertiti, the ancient pyramids, the mystery of the Sphinx, Osiris, the fertile Nile Delta. What more can be said? The Egyptians, compelling, strange, foreboding, some say even extraterrestrial. Well, perhaps. The people who left their indelible mark on civilization. How? How did they do it? How did they flourish for 3,000 years as the archetype against which all the world would be compared? The Egyptians. Why? Now it can be told, the Egyptians slept on stone. They worked hard, they played hard. And when they slept, they slept hard. The Egyptians slept on stone. Now this fine Egyptian stomp pillow is made available to you. Don't just walk like an Egyptian, sleep like one too. Fine crafted marble, hard as anything. Well, almost. I, I like the pyramids, built to last. Never needs fluffing. Yes, the coolness of stone on your neck. Mmm. Marble, the constant 20 degrees cooler than room temperature. Washes clean with a wet cloth. Now available in new Mega Marble or Ultra Obsidian. Order now. Don't delay. Call 1-800-NILE-SLEEP. That's 1-800-NILE-SLEEP. And when calling, leave off the last P. That's the P for pyramid. Or write Egyptian Stone Pillow, Mark Anthony Drive, King Tut, Pennsylvania. That's Egyptian Stone Pillow, Mark Anthony Drive, King Tut, Pennsylvania. Only $19.95. Only $19.95. The Egyptian Stone Pillow. Order it now. Plus shipping and handling. Call now. <sighs> Bigger. Bigger, bigger, better than ever. KB Design. You too can be a, a Mark Daisy show sponsor. Maybe not after this show. I, you, know, you might change your mind completely. But you can do it. You can do it if you want it. If you want it bad enough, you can do it. So many people give up. Hey, Pablo Picasso was 97 before he started to draw. Okay? So... You have to put yourself in a mindset. That's the whole thing. You have to put yourself in a mindset. So, so many people just, they, they're afraid of failure and they just, they give up. They just, they, they give up and, they, you know, that's what you can't, do. failure and that, after that, you, you just, you just, you just can't hold back. I confidence. I mean, there's nothing more bombastic. Nothing makes less sense than someone who is extremely confident and extremely wrong. <laughs> but, sure, there's failures. Those are the people that have given up. That's right. 
So I decided to emulate success. Tony Roberts says, find something successful, make it your own, learn something from something successful, and do it yourself. You can, you can do it if you want. If you don't want it, you're not trying hard enough. You... So there's these brown spiders all around my house for like the past, I don't know, four or five weeks. They, they, they're just inundating my house and they have these great, beautiful webs and stuff. And, and I go out there every day and I tear them down. You know, I don't want spider webs all around my, my house. And I tear them down and the spiders go scurrying off into somewhere. I don't know. And then and the next day, the webs are back. The webs are, uh, they're all back, and the spiders are up there again. That, that's tenacity. That's confidence. So I decided to emulate that. I, I tried spinning a web. I, I tried to spin a web. I tried to spin a web. I couldn't. I couldn't spin a web. I, I didn't know how much I tried. I was confident. I guess, I just, I, I gave up. I gave up too early. I'm just a failure because I just couldn't make a web. I tried to make a web out of, you know, how Spider-Man comes right out of his wrist and everything. It's fantastic. I, I couldn't do it. It kind of reminds me of the, uh, the old Penguin uh, a cartoon where where the penguin he's he uh, he he's out uh, like off of a, a little uh, iceberg and he's and he's flying. The penguin is flying. Of course, you know that they can't fly. Well, anyway, and he's flying, and he's flying, all his friends are on the iceberg, and he's looking at them, and he goes, we just haven't been flapping hard enough. So, so think of it that way. <laughs> if you're not being successful at something, you're just not trying hard enough. That's all it is. Confidence. <laughs> Confidence into mediocrity. Yay! <laughs> That's the motto of this show, by the way, in case you shouldn't get all right, here is this week's thing that's driving me crazy. It's the satellite delay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. All right. There's a guy in China, uh, and there's a guy in New York, and they're on the news, and the guy in New York goes, So, are there people running around uh, in the uh, Tiananmen Square district right now? Is that, is that what's happening, Bob? And Bob is over in China going, Oh, yes, yes. There are people who are actually uh, driving uh, their cars around here now. You wouldn't even think. Come on. Is it like, what is there? Is it like a seven second delay there? And the guys are going, uh, <laughs> CBS, NBC, really? I mean, don't they really? They don't have enough money for real time talk? ABC owns Rush Limbo. I mean, look, cut his salary in half and buy some decent equipment, okay? Come on, go, go out on a limb, guys. It, it's science. I can Skype my friend in Finland in real time. Really. I can, like, say, how you doing, Gustav? And he says, I'm doing fine, Mark. And I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe it's because he does that, too. It's, it's, it's an emulation. But, I mean, come on. These, I, I look... I don't even have a fucking network, okay? I don't have five million people watching me. I'm not, I'm not even a basic cable show, and I can do it in real time. One of these guys, like... Oh, come on! And what's with the constant nodding that they do, okay? When they're interviewing somebody, like, you know, the, the interviewer reporter. Did you ever notice that? They ask a guy a question, and immediately they're, they're like going... So, on the night of the murder, you were looking out your window, sir, and, uh, and what happened then? And they're going like this, as if to say, okay, finish up with your stupid response, because I got more questions. And they're going like this, all just, it's like, it's so distracting, I can't... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I was standing over my lawn, next to the deer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, uh, an arrow went right by my ear. Yes, yes. <laughs> Shut up and stop the bobbing already and listen to what I'm saying. Okay? Don't ask me another question. Uh, the bobbing and the weaving, the weaving and the bobbing. All the... Okay. Now, on to linguistics. Shall we? 
Oh, we should have some flourish music, don't you think, for like linguistics? Fl not from you, from Ellen. What's going on here? Oh, here we go. A little linguistic flourish music. I don't know. I don't know what that would mean. Oh. Makes me want to dance. Very proper, don't you think? Yes. That's linguistics for you. Proper. Not the way it should be, I believe. Yes. That was very nice. Was that like a minuet or something like that? No, it was like uh, just a couple of seconds. It was hardly even a minuet. Okay. Anyway, um, what can I say? There are no H's in strong, street, stray, or stroke. So why are people going, and, and they're doing this on TV, by, by the way. It was so strong that the whole thing came up and it went down the street and uh, there was a stray cat there and it, sh it, it like stroked him on the side of the head. What? Yeah, there is no H in S-T-R. Okay. You wouldn't say student, would you? No, because there's no R there, but you're getting away with murder there. I'm or to get shelter from the storm that's coming. No, no, no. The shelter from the storm. Storm. It sounds Wagnerian or something. She's a stripper. It sounds like you're drunk. She's a stripper. There's no H. There's no H. Get rid of the H. Come on, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. Which is not a bad idea. It's time to get out of here. It's time to get the H out of here. <laughs> Which is not a bad idea. But I, I thought of a little song uh, to do to, to take us out. I, I don't, I, I don't want to leave a, a bad taste in anyone's mouth. So here's another song that I wrote. This is a fun song. <laughs> It's called, speaking of taste, and good taste at that. It tastes like love. By the way, how are we doing on time? It feels like I've been up for, for hours. <laughs> I have no idea. This might be the shortest show. It certainly feels like the longest. Uh, you know, when you're doing bad jokes, it can take forever. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Seven, she lived down the street. Said, Would I be her boyfriend? I'll just pretend to be. We were playing doctor when nurse gave me a kiss. I said, Hey, this game is over. And what she said was this. He said, it tastes like love It tastes like love It tastes like love It tastes like love I was over 18 But she was 21 I never knew until was so much fun Till one day she left me Tasted tears I cried She kissed me on the lips once Before she said goodbye and She said It tastes like love It tastes like love mm, It tastes like love It tastes like love Casablanca playing Rick I wanted her forever And my answer quick I filled her glass with champagne Dropped the diamond ring She raised it to her lips and She began to sing She said it tastes like love 
tastes like love. It 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 tastes like love. Well, there you go. Tastes like love. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in, babies. How you doing? How you doing? Thanks very much. We'll catch you next time. want to thank Don McClay back there and his lovely wife, Ellen, for playing a little bit. Next time, she'll be back to play for real on camera. And thank you for our segue music. Uh, on camera and promo, uh, that will be Mr. Don McClay over there. And our sponsor, oh, our, uh, KB Design. Don't forget KB Design. Um... Look them up on the web. They're around. Uh, and from VK Media Studios on the East Coast, this is Mark Dacey. Adios, my friends.